President Bola Tinubu has directed immediate investigation to ascertain the allegation that the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, made payment of 585 million naira into a private account against Nigeria's financial laws. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, in a statement on Sunday, said the president is determined to get to the root of the matter and unravel the truth. According to Idris, the president promised that appropriate action will be taken to ensure that any breaches and infractions are identified and decisively punished in line with the administration's commitment to public accountability and due process. The statement advised citizens to ex exercise patience on the matter while the investigation lasts, assuring that the findings will be communicated duly and transparently to the public. Right, well, Arise Analyst Frank Tietje joins us now from our Abuja studio to discuss the allegations of corruption in the management of the social investment scheme and the need to ensure transparency and probity in the sector. It's great to have you, Frank, and uh, Happy New Year. I don't believe we've spoken this year. But uh, let's get straight into it. A probe into the affairs of the ministry. Uh, we've already seen the suspension of Halima Sheu of uh, the NSIPA. Is a probe enough? Do we need to see the minister stepping aside so that the public knows that the president is serious about this issue? Well, thank you and happy new year again. I think the president responded very quickly, timely and expectedly when he suspended the, uh, the coordinator of the Nigerian Social Investment Program Agency. Uh, whether the same uh, treatment should be given to the minister, it leaves, uh, uh, raises questions in the sense that uh, uh, are there clear, uh, and, clear and uh, obvious obvious infractions by the minister. Those are things that uh, the president has also called for a probe. If the president has, the president didn't have many options. If he didn't call for this probe, it would have been, um, you know, partial. It would have been a sort of preferential treatment for somebody against the other. But the issues are very many. Uh, the president is, uh, is, re is responding to a norm, uh, a norm very lately. Uh, it's, uh, this idea of transferring funds into private accounts has been the practice in government. So if the president is going to probe that issue, he should have probed it much earlier because um, that has been the practice. I, I know for certain, as a matter of experience, I have worked uh, in, in a very high level government committee in my career as a human rights lawyer, where I represented this country as, at, the human, at the United Nations level. And I realized that monies were paid to me for the sitting allowances I, I made from private accounts, because at that time, given the development of the Treasury single account, uh, it was a practice. The practice was, the, the, was developed Why somehow they created this idea of a project accountant who would now receive money into their private accounts and then begin to dispose as that uh, when directed or necessary. I found it very uh, illegal. I remember, fortunately for that project accountant, he called me back to say, look, I overpaid you. And I said, okay, send me your account number. And I sent all the money back to him because I found it very strange that the, for a government service that I provided, I, sh I, uh, I was being paid for a private account. So it's a norm. If the president is going to probe, then he probably may probe every ministry, department, and agency of government because that has been happening in the, since tra the tragic single account has been in practice. Probably every minister or every permanent secretary or the chief executive of a, a, an agency, uh, the, in the past and present uh, administration will be caught, to, uh, caught in the middle of uh, that kind of uh, infraction. However, I find it very curious that uh, the statement coming from uh, the, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs is that they were, they, they, she carried out that approval uh, according to due process. Very difficult it has been for them to, all, to, to not uh, tell us what due process is. They, it would have been more helpful if they traced uh, the presidential directive that gave them that sort of waiver or exception, because for every law, there is an exception. In this case, we're talking about a financial, financial regulation that were actually put in place by the Honorable Minister of Finance, not necessarily an express law made by the National Assembly. So certain regulations are, uh, are subject 
subject to several interpretations by these public servants themselves. And uh, so it leaves a lot of room for uh, interpretation whether or not what the minister has done is right or wrong. But the proper thing is for the president to have called for a probe because uh, the bandwagon and, uh, effect is that there is a statement calling for the um, head of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. But before that is done, uh, we must look at our system because uh, considering from my experience and my observation and my inquiries, uh, the practice of transferring money, uh, government money into private accounts of uh, private accounts of government workers is is normal uh, as a matter of practice in the la last administration of President Muhammad Buhari and to a large extent since the administration of President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Well, well said, Frank. Now, of course, if we expand this to the timing that this um, has come out, the, the, um, it's coming as ministries are preparing for their first performance assessment by the end of this month. Do you think we're going to see similar, um, a similar situation play out in other ministries, like what we're witnessing right now happening with um, Beta Edu? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If the president does a serious forensic probe, I doubt if any ministry will escape this kind of what is now being described as a malfeasance. But from my experience, I think it has is a normal practice, which the president ought to have addressed when that fellow uh, collected uh, stole, allegedly stole 109 billion. He was the the uh, uh, Ahmed Idris, who was uh, the Canada uh, uh, General of the Federation, stole uh, allegedly stole 109 billion. So at that time, the president should have considered how did it happen. The man should have actually been sat down before being prosecuted to actually unravel how he was able to do. That, that that was some measure of uh, mastery is stealing government funds. Now all those the, the, the president hasn't addressed all those things. Now this is coming. We are addressing this issue now because the uh, minister Better Ado was uh, queried uh, Shehu that uh, she transferred a certain 44 billion without her uh, knowledge, and they called the EFCC in. So you know the, the the idea is we probably may not be dealing with this uh, cesspool of unaccountability or uh, the corruption. As it, as, it, as it were, if Minister Edu did not uh, query uh, uh, Halima Shehu or call the EFCC in. But I maintain that the, the goal of the financial regulation actually is to make uh, government finances more transparent and see that uh, there is greater accountability and reduction of uh, graft and corruption in the way government operates its finances. And, and, and it's good. And unfortunately, it hasn't been reviewed for a long time, despite the fact that we, there was one interesting policy called uh, Treasury Single Account, which created this idea, this norm of uh, paying money into private accounts. The president ought to have addressed that before now. Now, when you say that this is the end time, or uh, where president, I mean the time where the ministries will be having their performance uh, uh, you know, review, Consider that these ministers had a retreat at the time. Uh, they learned these processes. They, 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 what happened to the minister? They, was she, uh, did she not learn anything at the uh, ministerial retreat that the president held for them? Very expensive one and had all those think tanks coming to speak. And again, why is it that, um, the, 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 you know, because it's also interesting, because as a lawyer, I know that beyond a guilty act, there must also be a guilty mind. So it interests me a lot that probably the president the minister is enjoying some less disciplinary measures that was that was served on Shehu because they, she has she attempted to make it uh, a bit transparent by asking for the the the, the Canada General of the Federation to transfer the money. But the statement I read from the Canada General is saying that it wasn't really insinuating that it was illegal, but saying that she wasn't going to do it, but rather the ministry the ministry as a self accounting entity should do it because if they were to transfer the money to a private individual, they, he or she as the Accountant General or the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation will not be able to monitor the expenditure in terms of the, the disbursing the monies to persons who didn't have account. Though all those are insinuations. They, come to, they bring the conclusion that that's their normal practice in government. So this presents a very golden opportunity for the President to take another look at the financial regulations that were issued by the Minister of Finance a long time ago uh, from my from the last checks in 2009 ought to have been reviewed to so now give a more effective a more transparent and less rancorous and uncertain way uh, public finance is uh, actually dealt with right now i'm glad we're bringing in the accountant general of the federation because uh, uh, of course we know that she did not honor this payment 
However, when you look at the legalities around it, uh, this came to light through a leaking document, a leak of a document. However, after not honoring the payment, she, it was actually the duty of the AGF to report uh, an, a, 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 shall I call it an abnormal request. My question to you is, if we're going to follow due process in this investigation, will the AGF escape this web that is being knit by this controversy? <laughs> See, the memo is released because there are disgruntled elements. There are persons who, somebody was queried for uh, transferring 44 billion to a private account. And then it's sort of uh, a concept of the kettle calling a pot black. You say, you, yeah, then you query me for transferring 44 billion when you also trans author authorize the transfer of 500, of, uh, 500 plus million to a private account. And then there is an accountant general who did not query it because I maintain, I maintain personally that that is a norm among them. And I've seen it, I've queried it myself. It will interest you after, since uh, nearly five years of my delivery of those services to the government, I haven't been paid probably, and even the money that I returned to the private account for which I was paid hasn't even been paid to me, probably being punished for not uh, following the, the norm that they have established. They established as a tradition among themselves. That's the reason why she, the Akana General of the Federation did not query it. Yes, indeed. If, uh, and, and again, I will not rush to a conclusion until I challenge them, especially the Beto, uh, Beto Edu uh, and her handlers, that if they maintain that the, the, the idea of, follow, of payment of monies government monies into a private account is according to due process. Let them provide. Let them be able to come and pub, come, and pub, come into the public and uh, public square and uh, explain and give us uh, how much it is uh, in due compliance with uh, whatever uh, directives that the president has made. Interestingly, the financial regulations being the directives of a minister, a co-minister, just like better do to herself, one wonders whether if she's subject to it, that's a, that's a different matter. Uh, that's to the president will determine that, or probably if uh, those who are planning to go to court make that an issue, and the court will determine that. But clearly, the, what, what's important here is that definitely the the the, the or, or general of the federation it did not believe that what Better Do uh, had requested was illegal. If she did, she would have she would have said so. What she did, from what the reports I've read, is simply that you process the money yourself as a ministry and take responsibility for it. We won't do it since we are not going to be accounting for the disbursement of those monies to the ultimate uh, recipients. Well said, Frank. Now, um, of course, you mentioned the retreat um, earlier on that was expensive, like you said, wondering if, you know, the minister didn't really learn much from there. But if we, if we go back to what preceded the retreat, when it came to the screening process of, 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 the, of her and the likes, what would you like to see shift when it comes to how those who are supposed to hold public offices are both um, appointed or approved, whatever the case may be. Well, you, <laughs> in our country, we have very minimum requirements for public service, especially political public service. You don't really need to know much or display so much uh, acumen and uh, in terms of being able to handle uh, public uh, office. We've seen central bank governors that have a single bachelor arts degree in history, and probably at those times we saw very much uh, stable monetary policies and uh, monetary situation. So I can, it's very fluid to determine qualification. However, uh, there's something quite instructive here is that when we give, uh, when our country give, gives these women a, a chance to participate in public office, uh, there is expected to be a shift from the, the, the fact that uh, corruption has actually always been driven by the male folk uh, as a matter of history. Uh, it, it becomes very painful that uh, when women, whether it's Halima Shehu or Beta Adu in this time, or when it started with uh, Patricia Ite, uh, you know, <laughs> and then you know, and then they are all being smeared with these um, uh, issues of uh, corruption, it becomes very painful for me. I wouldn't want to shift. I still believe that our Nigerian women are capable. Ugozi Okonja Wheeler still stands as a very strong testament of integrity and capacity, capability, and wide international acceptability. Nevertheless, I, I, I look forward to a situation where uh, they, you know these women will actually be subjected to thorough scrutiny. Where uh, and if they are found wanting, the president should do the needful. However, as it is now, the bandwagon effect is simply 
saying, crucify them, crucify them. Whereas I, as a lawyer, I, I first of all I assume the innocence of all those concerned until any form of guilt is proven. At this time, I think we should still continue to give Nigerian women, especially young women, a chance in political, in political office and in governance generally. Absolutely. We shouldn't just remember that they're women now because there's controversy. But uh, Frank, just maintaining this conversation, I know we focused a lot on the transfer of money. However, there's the document that has, you know, caused much of the furore, which is the document requesting travel to Kogi Airport. Uh, you know, earlier you said the transfer of money to personal accounts is something that's a norm in government practice. Uh, you know, it's, it's an unspoken secret, an open secret rather. Well, what about this uh, request to fly to an airport that doesn't exist? Is this also an open secret of how things are conducted in government offices? <laughs> I, I am sure. I'm sure those who facilitated my appointment by the president then into an interministerial committee will probably regret that I'm revealing a bit of some secrets of how government operates. I hate to, uh, you know, to speak in defence of any of these persons, but I think government runs in some measure of fluidity, opacity, and uh, which actually. And, and, and these things encourage uh, corruption. Nevertheless, somehow they have their rules. They have their rules. I also, I, I also know that with the flexibility they operate. I, I, I recall being a member of those uh, com committee where they round things up, they make things up, and all that. So you can. So definitely, there is no airport in Kogi. But somehow there is a possibility. And I speak from experience. I, if I didn't have that experience, I probably would be outrightly condemning the idea of uh, you know uh, voting money to go to. Kogi by air when there is no airport there. But somehow there's a way to consolidate all these monies. And that's why somehow it's kind of, uh, that's where public servants get a lot of money, you know, working in these extra uh, ministerial and uh, duties, you know, where they, because they, 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 they vote in a lot of money for themselves. The, the reason is that they justify it when they say, okay, they, say, they, they, they have various standards they created for themselves. So, for example, this is a possibility, I'm not sure, that they can say, look, if there is, you, you, there is a standard of go to the, uh, any state by flight. However, because of the security situation, go by flight. If there is no airport, consolidate the money as if there is an airport there and go in a, with a chartered taxi or whatever and all that. So the problem is that they have not been quite direct and uh, uh, truthful about it. That's the problem. But somehow, the way they do their self-accounting and all that, they use a lot of cover-ups to justify whatever they do. However, Interestingly, this is supposed to be an internal memo. You know, I, I have I have them here. I have the privilege of being uh, uh, of having all of these, and I've studied them. It looks very interesting. The idea is that the somebody simply is bringing this out now because somewhere somebody else is not happy. However, I maintain this is what they always do. The president, if the president wants to do a forensic audit, probably ask uh, Jim Obaze to also step into it, uh, uh, the likes of Jim Obaze who have uh, an ego eye with regards to all this investigation, and the president will be sorry, realizing that these practices have been there even before uh, President Muhammad Buhari, and then that simply been sustained. So it simply underscores the need for a total overhaul of uh, the way government finances are operated. And if you look at the idea of the uh, you know, Freedom of Information Act, yes, all of this, every ministry, department, and agency of government should be ready at all times to provide information as to the way it spends government money. So this is really no big deal that's an internal memo and somebody is leaking it. I don't want to maintain it's being leaked simply because it was not properly requested for. However, it's supposed to be a public document and it's supposed to be a document available to every journalist upon request. Therefore, it is important now to, for public servants to learn a lesson. The Nigerians are becoming more aware and that they cannot just think things for granted, right that there is, you are going to Kogi with flight ticket, whereas and they consolidate the amount of money. What I see here is a flight ticket, 200,000 naira, and then whereas in their own mind, or whereas in their committee meeting, they said, okay, charter a jeep or charter a helix and all that, and the money is equivalent to 200,000 naira. State it the way it is so that we know that you are either profligate as a government uh, uh, worker or you're trying to be economic, so that we can judge the kind of uh, standard by which our fin public finances are operated. Well said, Frank. Now, as we begin to round up with you, you have said that there's a need for a total overhaul of the process of how government spends money. But I still want to go back to, you know, the, the process of how those who occupy public office are screened. Of course, you've mentioned that 
we have um, great examples like uh, um, go, the likes of Ngozi Okonjewala and whatnot. If you put the gender aside, what are the metrics that you like to see, whether it's introduced or adjusted or removed in the process that could actually ensure that we have the right people, you know, getting into these um, positions of authority that could actually make or mar us as a country? That's a very difficult question. The reason is, it's very difficult to win elections. And those who win elections are the ones who control things in our country. When you win election and you have political power, you, are, you become the appointer. So that goes to uh, President Bola Ahmed Tudubu. The idea is that he looks, you see, political appointments are a reward mechanism in our political system. So he looks back and who is better? Do better do the national women leader or something who gathered a lot of votes from the South South for the president? So the idea is that it's give her, reward her with, I hate to use Use the word juicy ministry, you know, but that's what operates. So it's not so political appointments are not subject to issues of competence or some measure of, of, of having some academic records. Now it's not about that. It's about political reward. We need to look at it again. If those of us who sit down here and begin as armchair critics are beginning to say, look, we ought to appoint the guy who got something from Stanford or who has paid, paid, paid his dues working for Price Waterhouse Cooper and Coopers or whatever, <laughs> the idea is this those guys didn't win election. So the appeal, therefore, goes to the president. Mr. President, remember that, tech, you see, government is not just about party party or putting the guys who, won, who are able to gather votes. There's some measure of uh, technocracy in government. However, the technocrats in government are supposed to be civil servants, the permanent secretary, the directors, the likes of the uh, accountant general of the federation. Those are the persons who should advise a political appointee like Beta Odu, who doesn't have much experience. She looks quite young. And, 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 but to say, look, you can't do this, these are, these are the things... Well, you, are, you are limited by this, and these are what the rules say. Unfortunately, these technocrats also play along, afraid of the, 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 the political appointee. The truth about it is that a permanent secretary should be the one that runs a ministry and, t and gives and delimits the powers of a political appointee like a, a minister. So if you ask me about the parameters, the indices to in choosing political appointees, that's very difficult because it's a matter of those who brought votes. So in our country, the stand general standard in our country is that, look, just have school sat and then you become president. And then if the highest office in the land requires only school sat, why are you asking me that I should insist that the person who runs the humanitarian affairs ministry should have a degree from Stanford or should have, uh, I don't know, a sort of uh, experience? That's a difficult uh, question for me to answer. Right. Now, as we go now, Frank, very quickly, do you think Better Edu will survive this? <laughs> um, it's difficult to say. I speak in two ways. I think the Ferrari and the, um, the uh, I would say that the, uh, the public outrage against her action, I think is misplaced. The reason is, the, 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 I think it's an obfuscation of the issues. Whereas she issued um, a, a sort of query or a complaint to the EFCC for what she considers as a malfeasance, then what we now see is the, issue, the real issues being, uh, you know, overtaken by an act which he has done, which I consider as a norm in the public service. So if the president is going to be dispassionate, she will probably, he will probably excuse her. That's what I think. And then give the reason, with, uh, in addition to the fact that uh, giving himself the challenge of overhauling the entire finance uh, uh, operations of the public service. I think she might survive it because there ha she hasn't shown any culpability. There is a whole lot of difference between the issue that, uh, that uh, you know, overtook uh, Babachi Lawal, where uh, the grass cutter scandal, because it was obvious at that time that uh, Babachi Lawal, you know, ensured that government money was diverted to a certain account where he was personally going to benefit. If Benadou is able to escape the fact that she did not in any way personally benefit from any of those uh, authorizations she made, she'll probably escape on the ground that she is able to adduce enough evidence that this is the norm, this is the due process. However, unfortunately, the due process is being challenged now by a regulation, not necessarily a law of, made by the National Assembly, a regulation that is more, mainly 
nearly obsolete. 2009 is a long time, given the fact that the Treasury single account policy allowed uh, ministers and uh, permanent secretaries, I, as a matter of experience, I know that, to transfer monies to private accounts of project accountants in government. I've experienced it. Unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the better do and her handlers are failing, failing very woefully in explaining that, and that might consume them if they do not ad, uh, adduce their point correctly and properly before the president. Well, we'd like to thank you for your in-depth analysis. Arise News Analyst Frank Tatia, thank you for joining us here on Newsday.